Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Build. Our next guests have each enjoyed many public lives. She's been an actress and a country music star, he a professional football player, and now together they are the hosts of the very popular podcast, The Wind Down with Jana Kramer and Michael Cawson. Jana, Michael, thank you for being here. Yay. Thank you, Madison, so much. Thanks for having us. We super appreciate it. You just celebrated the one-year anniversary, of course, of this podcast. Congratulations. Thank you. I want to go back to before you ever started. On episode one, you said this is something you'd been thinking about for doing for several years. How did you finally say, all right, let's get a mic, let's go? You know what? I, I was pitching the podcast idea for probably about, I don't know, I'd say like a year, and I went on um, Becca Tilly and Tanya Rad's podcast, Scrubbing In, and Amy Sugarman, the producer, was like, you're so good at this. Like, you should be doing a podcast. And I'm like, girl, I've been pitching it forever. And um, she's like, oh, well, she's like, let's do it. And I was like, I have, the, like, the name, everything, like, the concept behind all of it. And, you know, we really just turned it into, you know, this. And it started with just me um, and then another co-host, Jen. But then, you know, my husband would come in from time to time and do some episodes with us. And honestly, the numbers started spiking and, because I was like, wow, women actually do want to hear what men say. So it was, That's awesome. I was like, honey, will you please be on the show now? So when you were the guest on episode two, were you thinking, all right, maybe I'll come on when she begs? Like, or yeah, were you thinking, was, I'll be regular? It was just something for fun where I was doing another job at the time. So anytime I was free and she wanted me on, I'd come on just to support her and have a good time. And then it just kind of slowly turned into what it is now. Yeah, he would leave and he's like, babe, that was actually really fun. I was like, I know, I told you, because you're able to just like talk and the great thing is, is there's no one else there. So it's just us talking. So you can just say whatever you want to say. But sometimes that can get you into yeah, muddy that's waters. Yeah, nerve-wracking. Because <laughs> oh, then you know. leave and you're like, you're wow, like, we really oh, said a lot of things Can today. we edit that part out? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's really cool to have your perspective. I think, obviously, the male macho football player thing is not something that is often encouraged to then open up and talk about vulnerabilities. Right. I think we expect it from our female stars. Sometimes we demand it from our female stars. You know, what do you think about challenging that stereotype and sort of opening up and trying to get other men to maybe feel comfortable doing the same? For sure. I appreciate that. I think with my background in professional athletics, it definitely kind of helps um, change that, you know, move the needle a little bit on that stereotype. Um, but it's just been something that, honestly, I wasn't that open at first. It was because of Jana and her encouraging me to be that way and to show that we can really help people. Um, you know, really helped me kind of get out there and say, okay, this is actually something we can do. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was super tough for him, but I, I would show him DMs from people that I would get on Instagram being like, that episode with Mike on it really helped me. And I, I had my husband listen and now he sees a def different perspective and he also sees my perspective. And I was like, see, I'm like, this is why I want to do this. I'm not trying to air out your dirty laundry or our dirty laundry. I'm trying to help people because we've been through so much stuff that there's got to be a reason, you know, and we have a platform to be able to help people. So that's why I wanted to turn Lemons into lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. I also think, I mean, you guys do have young children. There's got to be something about you want to show them that both sexes should be able to talk about things and that this is what we should expect from partners in a way. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, we have our boundaries that we try to follow. We're not always perfect in front of our kids. You know, we don't want to raise our voices or argue too much, but it's kind of inevitable. But we want them to see the conflict that we have, understand that mom and dad, you know, work at their relationship. There are arguments, there are fights, but there are ways to resolve it in a healthy way. Yeah, I had, we had a therapist. I was like, how do you do it? Because I'm like, the not arguing and showing the perfect then sets up false expectations of what a relationship looks like. Right. But then having too much of an argument is bad, too. So it's just having that like healthy boundary, which is we have to learn how to table it a little bit better. But yeah. Yeah. I think one of the coolest things is that you guys do have a lot of guests on, a lot of experts, a lot of different voices from different places in the world. How far out are these advanced, like episodes planned? Are you, do you know what's happening <laughs> six weeks from now, or are you figuring it out week by week? You know, our, our podcast producer and I and us, you know, we, we definitely, we would like things planned out a little bit farther in advance, but sometimes it's hard to, you know, to lock some of these people down, especially some of the celebrity guests that we get. But, you know, we worked on a guest that you wanted, Jason and Shelly. Um, Martinkus. Mar Martinkus. And, you know, we were working on that for a while just to, like, get people's schedules together and stuff, too. So we have a lot of people that are kind of on our dream list that, you know, we have behind the scenes we're trying to work on. But if we don't have a guest, I mean, we have plenty of... Uh, plenty to talk about. Plenty plenty of topics we can discuss and, you know, move on. But we enjoy, we enjoy having those professionals on because we never claim that we are, you know, experts or professionals. We always throw that disclaimer out there. So to have these experts come in and validate things that we may be saying or kind of help people out there understand what we're talking about. You know, I was just thinking in the beginning, you were probably just hoping enough people liked it to justify another episode. Yeah. <laughs> and now, you know, a lot of people are listening. You know, what is the new pressure where you say, I know there's 200,000 people who are going to hear this one. Do I need to sort of filter myself? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think there is. 
I get scared with that because I know that some of the outlets listen to it. I mean, even, you know, he said something about Olivia Culpo the other day, and all of a sudden it was like an us. He's like, God, he's like, why oh, did they? Loves us, it, yeah. yeah, I'm like, why did, like, who cares what who I cares say? What I I'm like, say I know, but that. it's like sometimes I had to make sure because I knew, I'm like, if I said something, then they're going to run that. So it's just like, I mean, you have to be careful, but at the same time, I don't want to be too censored, which is why I make sure that I'm, you know, I just stay within the boundaries. But I made the comment about the nannies and like the hot nannies USA, like when attacking me, I was like, it's not, I'm not, I just like to have a conversation. I like to just come up with things and, and challenge people's opinions and come up with, you know, different topics, but. You I mean, know. when people are mad, we've all seen what happens, like, in the comment sections right. on people with followings, Instagrams. You know, how hard is it to remind yourself the greater good is that there's more people DMing me saying this has been great for my life? Well, and that's kind of Mike always gets on me. He's like, he'll know when I'm kind of in an Instagram war. He's like, why are you doing that? He's like, the one person that said something negative. He's like, you've got, like, 20 other thousand people that were said something nice. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I just, like, I need to, like... To, to try to, like, tell her, like, that's not what I meant when I said this. And he's like, why? why? It's natural to want to defend yourself, especially over a sensitive topic. Um, you know, it's so funny because I think that you guys do open up a lot on the show. And the reason it works is because it really is unfiltered. Have your families been surprised by any of, like, the topics, what they hear? Do you ever get off and you're like, I have so many phone calls I have to make? I think you kind of nipped that one in the butt with your mom. Remember when she texted you about, like, the, you're losing your virginity episode? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of told her, I was like, look, mom, if you're going to listen and, and everything, there's no, you can't, no more questions about what we talk about. I was like, that's a boundary. I'm putting that in place. Like, yeah, she's like, so who is the girl that you lost your virginity oh. to? Yeah, I was like, we are oh, not. So not the reaction from a mom I was thinking where she was saying, don't say that out loud. No, 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 no. My parents are very private. So, you know, we make sure that we try to, I mean, I make a lot of in-law jokes just because I think everyone can right. relate to that. But they're they're amazing people, but they're, they are very, they're much more private. Yeah. So we try to respect we res that boundary. Yeah, we respect our parents and in our families that this is our life we don't need to bring them into it so if they're choosing to be private and we want that for them we're choosing to be public and you know that's our responsibility so they don't deserve to be brought into anything that they don't want a part of but my mom listens and she you know she didn't know how it's funny my mom's generation she's like what's a podcast right. like how like, oh yeah and i was like mom it's actually on your phone and if not you can download it anywhere where you listen to podcasts but so now she's into it so it's been fun that. Um, do you think about the day when, you know, maybe your daughter Googles, finds the podcast and listens? Like, is that exciting because then she gets to see who mom was when she was very young? Or is there a sense of what do I what do I how do I handle it? It's uh, we know that day is inevitable and it's more of, of of everything that we've been through. Right. So unfortunately, kids learn how to use the Internet at such a younger age. So when she does see things about us, good, bad and the ugly, how to explain the unfortunate things that happened at such a young age when they're not going to understand. If she's eight years old and she's finding things on the internet, it's like, what does this mean? When she's not of age to understand, how do you talk to a kid like that? So that's the thing that we're kind of... I think we have to for. get ahead of it, though. We, we will, yeah, we like do, we but it's like, time. what yeah. age is that? Yeah, I mean, I think there's something very cool about it. We never know our parents before us. Like, I, to right. me, the great, it's better than it is, like, scary. I think that it's awesome that they will have this preserved for them. Yeah, well, the daughter will be first, and honestly, I'm terrified of her when she gets into her adolescence, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm curious when we're talking about when you guys are doing these episodes, do you write down the questions you're going to ask each other? How planned is it, and how much is it? Let's just wing it and see what we come up with. Honestly, there's so many times when we go into the studio, and we're like, God, I have no idea what we're going to talk about. But then something will happen. I mean, we got into an argument, like, on the way to one of our podcasts. And we're like, perfect. There's some material. Like, don't there's say anything content. else. We're going to finish this on the podcast. Yeah. So, and then there's, you know, when it comes to asking questions, there's a lot of times when when he goes like that, I'm like, I know he's got next question. I have no idea what he's going to ask. But let's just, we, 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 we do wing it. We wing it a lot. Jana definitely wings it every time. There, sometimes when we have guests, I'll do a little bit of research and kind of write some questions down because just that's how I work. Um, but Jan is just ready for it. She's born to do this kind of stuff. I thrive in chaos. So yes. that's my kind so of You know thing. it motivates and it makes it better. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Do you guys ever disagree? Like when you're in the middle of a conversation, how do you know, all right, I should pull back and not ask the actual question maybe the way that I'm thinking of it now? For me, I don't like it when I listen to a podcast personally is when everyone's agreeing because then to me it's like it kind of gets boring. So I always want to play the devil's advocate. Right. And then... But then he'll, if I'm agreeing on something, like he'll play the devil's advocate. So I think we do a really good job of making sure that each of us are kind of, I well, I don't know, and like playing the, the the yeah. other side of it because I think if you everyone agrees, you're like, all right, cool. Like I don't, does that doesn't to me doesn't seem very entertaining. No. When you listen back to older episodes, I actually don't even know if you do listen back to older episodes. You know, where do you think the growth has been as hosts of a show? 
what were you guys kind of trying to work on as you were entering into a new? Mike's you know, with killing it with the ads now. He's doing a lot better <laughs> yeah, with the ads. That, that's the worst <laughs> yeah, part about no. it is doing the ads. I was terrible at that. I think it's um, just the knowledge and realizing what kind of questions we want to ask and where we want to direct those and being able to multitask and listen and then also have your next question ready. Um, I mean, just like, you know, professionals like you are able to do with everyone that comes in. So we're trying to learn that. Yeah. And for me personally, like, I'm a very sarcastic person and sometimes that can be taken um, like I'm being really hard on my husband, but I just, I joke, that's kind of a joke around a lot. And so I think a lot of people in the beginning were like, you're so hard on your husband. And I can totally like, I listen back and I'm like, oh yeah, that does. If they didn't know my personality, then I could see that. So, you know, I kind of made a, an apology to the fans that have listened and then to my husband, I'm like, I'm, I am sorry if that ever, you know, sounded a little too harsh. And so I've been working on that. So I, I do listen back just so I can grow and become better as a listener and as a participant. So. That's awesome. Um, something that I think that is very cool when I think about your career is, as I'm sure you've noticed, there are times where it feels like the tabloids care more than like the critical reviewers of music and of shows. And now you're sort of the one who is going to make the money off of your own personal life in a way. Like, is there a level of empowerment where you just say, I'm so happy to be in charge of the narrative. Like I'm going to be the one. To and talk that's it. why I want to do it. And that's why I've, we wanted to do it together because so many times people will just write stuff about him, about me, about us. And it's like, you know what? That's not the truth, but let us tell you the truth from our, from our mouth, because we don't want our kid reading the stuff. That's not true. Like we want to be able to be in front of everything and to say like, no, actually this is what it is. And this is how we're doing it. So. Yeah, I mean, and it's all a testament to Jana because she was the driving force behind that. Again, like she said earlier, is I had a lot of shame still about everything, so I didn't want to talk about it. I wanted to sweep it all under the rug. Like, let's not talk about it. That means more people are going to talk about it. But now being able to control the narrative, like you said, Madison, is is really what we're enjoying and thriving doing. I guess I'm curious, in general, when you think about this experience and where it's sort of taking your career to a new like level and sort of conversation, what is the greatest reward? Like, what do you enjoy most about still doing this and growing it? I mean, just last night when we did our first live podcast, someone came up to us and was just like, this has helped our relationship, me and my boyfriend's relationship so much. And, you know, that is like, that's exactly why we're doing it. So thank you for, for listening. Thank you for finding something that you're able to connect to and to just again, like hear, hear the other side out. And I think that's important to, to want to be able to grow and be a better person for yourself, but then also for your relationship. Yeah. And the fact that we have our, our male demographic is building as well because of they're hearing our dynamic together and hearing both sides, having some, some guys come up to me last night and saying like, genuinely, thank you for opening up. You know, it helps me do the same with my wife or fiance or girlfriend. And that means a lot to me that other men are willing to do the same thing. You know, interestingly, when you used to perform and have people watching you, you were never also speaking at the same time. You know, football did not right. require a microphone. How were the live performances? I mean, I know the first one was literally last night. I mean, what was it like for you to sort of have people watch you do this? It's uh, It was different because, again, when you're on a football field, you have pads on, a helmet. No one really knows who you are. You're just a number out there running around. Um, so... And you do that in, you know, tens of thousands, in front of tens of thousands of people, it's fine. But in front of a crowd of 300, I was a lot more nervous last night than I had been in a while, especially, I think my whole thing is, like, my whole good enough, not good enough. So I'm like, why are people paying money to see me say anything? Like, why, who, why would somebody do that? Yeah. But, uh, no, it was really fun and exciting. Is there something different for you when you perform music after having a very deep conversation like that? It was cool. I mean, you know, yeah, like we sat and chatted for an hour about some incredibly awesome and deep things. And then I got to sing songs. So I felt like everyone in the room with me were right. my friends and we were just hanging out and having a really cool, intimate night. That's awesome. That's all we have from me. There are a couple of people in the audience who have been waiting to ask you a question. We're going to start right here. Okay. Hello, Jenna. You look very nice today. Thank you. And how are you, sir? Good, sir. <laughs> I'm Ryan Hoy from Queens, New York. Um, What's your favorite topic on your podcast? My, I mean, obviously we talk a lot about relationships, but I think one of my favorite topics was connecting love and sex. That was an episode that we did about how to connect those two and what those two mean on those levels. Yeah, I think uh, on top of that too is just our values as parents and with our kids and how we raise them and just challenging each other and, and what our belief system is and just hearing other people's point of view on how they raise their kids too. Well, I hope I listen to IR Radio about that. Okay. Thank you so thank much you. for listening. And then here's our second question. Hey, um, I was wondering what advice you'd give to someone who's nervous about starting a podcast but wants to. Oh, man. Um, it's totally normal to be nervous. I mean, I was so nervous the first time, too, listening back. I'm like, ugh, like, I could have done way better. But you're, like, own what you want to say because 
your message is not like there's someone else that wants to hear your message that some they want to hear what you have to say because whatever you're going through or you want to talk about there's someone else that can relate to that so look at it as an, in a way of yeah you can even say like guys I'm really nervous but I want to talk about this because I know that other people need to and want to hear this because again like w when we talk about miscarriage or babies it's so many people have gone through that so it's nice to have an outlet for them to be able to go to so whatever you have to talk about just own it and just be authentic and that you do feel scared but you're excited to talk about whatever you're going to talk about yeah i mean that's it just own it and have humility around it and like janice said if you're nervous say that to people because they'll relate you know so just yeah so just um, do it just do it yeah <laughs> that's awesome you guys stick around janice is going to perform a couple songs for us thanks guys thank you Thank you.